Hello, my name is Morris Mann. As always, I thank you for coming to my talk show, Tell It Like It Is. Again, I'm your host, Morris Mann, and my co-host, Joseph Spencer. And you've probably been wondering, where have we been for the last month? Because we haven't done a show in over a month. But we've been busy with other projects. Actually, we just finished uh, two short films. Uh, down on the bottom, you click on the link and view these films on my other channel. One is ent entitled The Package. Very good uh, kind of suspense thriller. Everybody loved that one. I think it's our best work today. Yeah, that's good. I want to raise. Oh, he's going to get it raised. We all, we're both going to get it raised. We're going to talk to the production manager after the show. And our other uh, short film, which was called Camcorder. It's kind of a sci-fi, kind of a uh, Alfred Hitchcock type of thing. But anyway, getting to the topic of the day. And today we're going to talk about politics and the structure of politics in this country. Yeah, Chicago. I'm originally from and, uh, Chicago. I check back back and forth with my uh, friends and family that's still there and they tell me about you know the things that are going on. And I'm, I'm going to say this briefly and then I'm kind of turn over to Joe and, and get his perspective on what he think of Chicago politics or politics in general. And as far as Chicago politics, uh, they have a new mayor, Emmanuel Arap. What? I, I always have a hard time pronouncing his name. Uh, don't ask me. Yeah. <laughs> that's terrible. Yes, yeah, uh, manual something. Sorry, you know. But, yeah, that's uh, terrible. The, as, <laughs> as usual, the Chicago public schools are really, uh, you know, in a lot of uh, chaos. And they are planning to close 50 schools. And a lot of those schools are located in the black neighborhoods. So the black community is very disappointed with uh, his, you know, his take on or him overseeing what's going on with the school system. And this is my take on it. And again, I must make this quick and then turn it over to Joe. When you're hired to do a job, you should do just that, your job. If me or Joe don't come to work, we don't get paid, we get fired. You know, plain and simple. And it should be the same thing with politics or politicians. Uh, we pay them a very good salary to balance the budget and do other things, and they normally don't do it. They fall back on old reliable. Let's just raise the taxes and keep screwing the regular guy. And uh, that's not the solution. That's the cop out to me. But uh, on that note, I'm going to turn it over to Joe and, you know, get his perspective on, you know, what do he think about the politics in Chicago or just well, in general? I, I was raised on uh, 45th and Federal. That's uh, a couple of blocks from uh, 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 the, uh, the, the back of the yards where Mayor Daly okay. was uh, uh, lived, his neighborhood. There was the stockyards and, and some factories and Mayor Daly's neighborhood and the, the little niggers moved, lived on the other side of the track. So they would come over during election time and be in people's neighborhood, hook up with the church and stuff. It's a good old boys thing. You know, our politics are, 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 are they, they're, they're assembled off of, uh, assimilated off of the, the Greek politics. And uh, when you have a good old boys club and you be passing down power for, from year to year, from decades to decades, to century to century, you have a pattern that you have to keep that nepotism in there. You know, you, you, you begin to find out or you get people's, people's who even, even if they're not related to the, the main power structure, they're friends. So uh, it, it's a good old boys thing. And like he was saying, if we didn't do our jobs right, we'll, we'd be fired. But you can't keep a power base if you can't protect your friends in politics. You know, and it, it, you got you got a politics thing going on, and these people have a certain amount of votes behind them. That's what you want to, want to, to get yourself back in office. You know, politics is hooked up with the churches and the schools. You know, they they, they do this tax based thing. You know, and, and hey, like he said, they were, they tear down uh, uh, schools in Chicago. Well, those mostly all those schools are low tax base. And you, you know, know, you know what? If I can interject right quick. You know what really kind of got me upset? Uh, somebody sent me an email about uh, Governor Quinn of mm -hmm. Illinois and what he's proposing to do. I don't know if he's done it yet or, or not. But what he wants to do is the senior citizens, after you get a certain age, you can rat the, the public transportation for free or really reduce rate, I yeah. believe. And what his proposal is to make them pay full rate. Now, what makes me angry about that is, first of all, the senior citizens have already put in their time and money into the system, and they shouldn't have to be recalled to go back into go back. duty to pay for these, you know, pay things. And here is a man that will never dr take the bus to work or never walk to work. If he's not chauffeured to work, he's driving a brand new car to work. 
Now, anybody that's on the bus in most cases don't want to be there, but they have to be there because they have no transportation other than the bus. So these senior citizens are already at a disadvantage if they don't have a car. Now they have to get on the bus and, and pay regular price. And just say another quick thing. Uh, when it comes to security or safety, a woman is the most vulnerable, and the next on that list is the elderly. So, you know, these people are at a risk of, of, of being, you know, assaulted by younger people, and they're on the bus. So, you know, it makes me angry that they keep finding ways to keep doing the, the citizens as opposed to doing their job and coming up with creative uh, programs to increase the revenue to pay for these services or keep them running. Again, the solution is not to raise nothing. That's a cop-out. You know, that's not the solution. That's a cop-out to me. When, when you have a, a population that's, that's aging, the older you get, uh, the less power you have. The less monies you make, you, you, they want you to take what you, you can get, you, you should be dead. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'll be 65 uh, in the end of July, mm -hmm. I should be dead. I don't have a couple of million dollars, I should be dead. Yeah. So that bus thing is built on the backs of poor people. So the whole, basically the whole country is built on the backs of poor people. And here's another thing as far as Emmanuel. Uh, this is how I feel, and this is just, you know, this is my opinion, and it don't really mean nothing other than it to me. But what Emmanuel wants to do, you know, is to, 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 to close some of these schools, but yet his kids, are, they go to public school. I mean, private, private school. school yeah. So it's like, to me, if you are elected official, one of the criteria should be that your kids go to regular school, uh, you take the bus, you know, or you take yeah. the train. Be part of, of the population. Right, because it's, it's really an insult that people that make decisions for other people, it doesn't affect them. You know, so they really don't care. There's no vested interest and, to say, and, and well, my, my daughter goes to public school, so I want to make sure the public schools stay right. on top. You know? but, but just for just the sake of argument, uh, uh, um, when, when, when you are uh, a, a person of, of power, you know, and, and you on TV and stuff, your kids can be in danger. Yeah, and I know you were about to go there, yeah. and that's true. But guess what? That's just that's part of the territory you taking that taking our, that job. Our, I mean, you know this coming in, so it's like, okay, well, what do I do? You know, because I understand that. But guess what? These other normal kids are just as valuable as those right. kids. Th that's true. But they're not treated the same. The, uh, but I totally not. understand and agree with you that <coughs> there is an extra heightened alert. And I guess maybe a I solution to, to that is... I went to public schools all my life. They're, 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 if your daddy was a postman or a policeman or a nurse, even though they lived next door to you, they were treated better in school than you were being on ADC. Yeah, they got better treatment. Yeah. yeah. You and were I, smarter, and I, you were faster, you were prettier. And I really don't think that's fair, you know, but, you know, it is what it is, but... It's part of the politics yeah. structure. But, you know, until, you know, we look at of uh, the structure, nothing's going to change because, again, these people should be held accountable for what they were elected to do. You know, if you say you're going to balance the budget and you got a four-year term, by the time 24 months come around, your midpoint, you should be somewhere close. If you're not, you should get fired. You know I mean, plain and simple, you should lose your job and somebody else come in and do what you claim you could do. But, but when they look at the books, when they get in office, they should tell the truth. You look at the books and you got the... Uh, Forty billion dollars that's been old for ever since 1966, yeah. and with interest. Yeah. And, and you tell. And speaking of money, and uh, they don't tell you that. Chicago politics have a history of stealing money. I well, mean, look at uh, the Reverend Jesse Jackson Jr. Yeah. You know. Uh, that's business as usual. I have no sympathy for people that were already well to do. Because if he would have never took any of that money, well, let me just explain what happened. Uh, he took some of the campaign money, spent it on memorabilia, Michael Jackson stuff, Rolex watches, yeah. bought uh, the, the white woman that he was sleeping with on the side, yeah. a, a watch. I have no sympathy for, for that individual or him because if he had never stole a dime, he would have been comfortable for the rest of his life. They were grooming him to become a, a future president. Right. And I'm not buying that. You know, no. I feel well, sorry for his wife because she did what a spouse supposed to do yeah. to an extent. Stand by your person. Well, and I don't think that she would have got caught up in that if he hadn't stole the money. He, but he, she was trying to cover he, his ass. He probably was doing what she told him to do. No, he was covering his, <laughs> she was trying to cover his tail. Yeah, well, <laughs> but I think that that was solely his idea. Now, she agreed to it because, mm -hmm. you know, 
this is how I feel in a relationship or marriage. You should be able to come to your spouse for anything but two things. Asking them to do something illegal that might get them, get them jail time or something that might physically hurt them. Well, marriage is politics, too. Yeah, but I think outside of those two requests, I think, you know, you should be able to get whatever you want. But uh, the fact that he, you know, kind of in so many words will talk to her and say, hey, I'm about to do this. And she just d d decided to cover him or look, you know, look, have his back. And it's unfortunate because now they're both going to jail. Yeah. You know? They're going to jail. P politics again. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Jesse Jackson, uh, I had been around him, you know, seeing him and hearing about him when I was a kid, 13, 14 years old. And I, 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 was, I began to say, who made this man my leader? Where did he come from to be my leader? Well, I think Politics he, is really true. All of a sudden, you, 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 you black, so this man is your leader. Well, I think legitimately he started throughout the ranks like Mar uh, Martin Luther King. Who and made then Martin Luther King our leader? Well, Martin Luther King was a leader. I mean, you, you look at his credentials. <laughs> oh. And I mean, this man gave his life for us, so it's like, whoa. But Jesse Jackson, I think, was on that path, but I think he realized that he's not trying to go the extra mile, which I can understand. Nobody wants to get killed. Right. But I think they bought Jesse out back in the 60s. Well, and that's I know why, when he came out. And that's why nobody I, tried know, to kill him, because here's the thing. When you are a leader and you are trying to, you know, have a cause that's legitimate and bucking the, the corrupt system, they will try to kill you, and most likely they will succeed in killing you. Here's the list. Martin Luther King, Huey P. Long, uh, the, the Kennedys, uh, Gandhi, 90-pound man in a diaper. You know, how much of a threat is he? And, and you said Lincoln. But getting back to Chicago politics. Yeah. But Ron Bogoyevich, who was the governor before Quinn came in, yeah. this is my take. Uh, Ron Bogorovich tried, Rob Bogorovich tried to do the right thing. He came in with fresh ideas, innovative uh, programs. And one of them was this. Senior citizens, for the most part, are on a fixed income. On a fixed income. You know, they, they can only afford so much medicine I'm and so a, much food. I'm on a fixed, 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 fixed. Yeah, well, most of us are. <laughs> and he came up with the idea of uh, senior citizens should have the option to go to Canada to get their medicine because the medicine there is like half of half of what they pay here. Yeah. And good idea. And they shot it down, said, well, you know, uh, FDA won't approve of that. And uh, we don't know what they're giving them over there. So we can't let them do that. That was the surface concern. But the, the, the main concern was we want to keep that money in how this country. Many, how many poor, poor uh, elderly people? I can't afford to go down to, to go up to Canada every six months. No, married. you can order your, your, your oh, medicines so online and it comes to you through the mail. Just yeah. like the medicine here, yeah. most of them. Most senior citizens don't physically go get their they medicines no more. They, they that mail was it. really dumb of me, wasn't it? What? <laughs> you had to get on play well, you didn't know. Get... I mean, you don't know. But, you know, that's just one of many examples of what Rob Bogorvich tried to do. Yeah. And he was not a part of the good old boy network, no. and they wasn't having that. So they literally baited that man, and once they baited him, they jailed him. Yeah. And they gave him more jail time than if he had went out and killed somebody or if someone else went out and murdered somebody. He got more time than a murderer. So, you know, business, unfortunately, is usual in Chicago as far as politics. He was a man, again, trying to do the right thing. He kept getting blocked, like Harold, the late Harold Washington, and they gave him jail time. And with the late Harold Washington, I'm going to make this assumption or statement, and I believe it's true that they killed him. That, you know, well, they killed hey, him. They said he ate too much. He ate too much soul food. Yeah. <laughs> well, all of us would be dead if that was the case. Yeah, well. Okay. Okay, let me just throw in my two cents and wrap it up. I do believe that in this country, not just in Chicago, Illinois, but we have to kind of look at the structure of politics and, and redefine it because, again, the people that we pay a large six-figure salary are not doing their jobs. They're falling back on unreliable. If I can't do my job and balance the budget, which is what I promise to do or come close to it, I'm going to raise everybody's taxes. That's not the solution. It's a cop-out. It's a cop-out. Uh, I don't believe that you should be able to make laws that extend your time in government your time and your politics, and a good example of that is when the, 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 last, the, the last mayor, Mayor Daley, mm -hmm. uh, did the agreement with the parking meters yeah. for 75 to 100 years. Yeah, it, I it, think it, that's ridiculous. That's yeah, it's about 100. I think it's ridiculous that he was given power to, you know, go further into the future and, and damage that, you know, and that I don't think he should have the power to do. Another thing quickly, and then I'm going to wrap it up, is uh, like with the president, uh, president, you get two terms and that's it. It should be the same thing with the mayor. You do serve two terms and you're done. You shouldn't stay in there till you die. 
but the longer you stay, it's harder to get you out because you didn't increase or uh, created a, a, a power structure yeah, that's hard you, to get you, you out. Do, but As always, I thank you for coming to my talk show, Tell It Like It Is. And until next time, I'm your, uh, your host, Morris Mann, and my co-host. Joseph Spencer. We're all Americans. Keep thinking. Mm -hmm.